be prepared. Here are 20 helpful tips. I'm still in chapter four on the desperate need to be prepared for the weight loss process. I'm going through my book here, What Works When Diets Don't, What Works When Diets Don't, and putting this into podcasts and also uh, the audio version of this book. And I'm going to be, you know, I go back and forth on different topics and uh, uh, try to tie it in with where we're at. And then uh, trying to make each point, we're talking about wisdom. We've talked about preparation. We've talked about changing, choosing to change from the inside out. And then in the next chapter, uh, we're going to get right into some details about food. But I want to, I want to finish this one up because it's so important. Be prepared. Here are some helpful tips. I'm actually going to list 20 helpful tips for you. Number one. Since the cost of healthy food can get expensive, try looking for sales at different locations. I do that uh, often, or my family does. You know, there's Vons in our area, Trader Joe's, Sprout. Some of you have Whole Foods. And I've walked in, I've seen, um, you know, blueberries, 50% off organic blueberries. And so purchase those. That does take a little bit of extra work, or I won't buy anything right then. I'll wait a couple of days because we still have some fruit. Um, or you find this great deal on uh, apples. And I try to, try to find organic, um, because if you, if you can't, you definitely want to wash the fruit well, especially what they call the dirty dozen. Berries are heavily sprayed, blueberries. They're sprayed with something called glyphosate. Um, and it, 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 and even if they're GMO, genetically modified, they've been, uh, gene spliced, um, where they're called Roundup Ready. And you can spray this bush, this plant, plant bush or vegetable or fruit, and it won't die from the roundup, but the weeds around it will because it's been genetically modified. So when you can, you know, organic is best. If you can't wash it really good. Uh, and I often find organic eggs at 50% off. Um, their expiration date is coming up fairly soon, but you know, if you boil them or use them, or you can find local farms, uh, there's people that have chickens and they'll sell you, you know, a good egg, good dozen eggs for five or six bucks. Um, but I know it can get, be, it can get expensive. And I think I'll talk about this in a minute. If your budget is tight, you want to do a few different things. You want to be selective. And so you want to find God-given food at a discount. I've walked into Sprouts before. We just did it this week and bought uh, four packages of ground organic turkey meat uh, for $1.99. And they're normally, what, $9.99 or, or $10.99, whatever it is. Uh, and so get some of those, freeze them, maybe buy some... some uh, uh, a quarter of a of a of a grass fed cow go in in with in friends again moderation you know the and that's another thing about intermittent fasting or not eating too much is when I cut out just you know extra eating in my diet you know the family saves money I mean how much extra how many hundreds of dollars could you save if we don't always have that have that second helping um, even in big places like Costco you can find some really good deals. Um, how about a bag of organic beans that you have to cook, you know, but there's great prices on that. Um, you also have, you know, you can buy some healthy protein powder that you can mix with organic soy milk. I'm not, I'm not scared of soy. I used to d uh, be worried about it because it's, it's, you know, it could affect on the body, possibly converting to estrogen, but looked at a lot of studies, even in o Okinawa and the, the amount of soy they eat is incredible. Um, and we just, you know, it, it can do that if you, in, in, if you're eating soy all the time, but I think just every now and then it's no big deal at all. So that's number one. Um, you know, you can make changes, uh, with, uh, even on a budget. Uh, for example, if you, okay, how many times do you go to your favorite coffee shop? How, how many times do you stop by your favorite place and get your snack and, and frivolous spending on Amazon or DoorDash? Or, I mean, if you, if I've had a family before look at this. And I'm going to be conservative because I don't want you to not believe me because I can't remember the exact number, but I think it was around $1,200 they were spending a month, $1,200. Now, this included eating out uh, a, f a few times as well, but all these extra things. So organic food or, not, or just healthy food is too expensive. Well, here's $1,200 that you're spending on when you don't need to. Um, so I know that's exaggerated amount, but even us, let's say we stop our favorite coffee shop. You know, you got five, six, seven dollars a day for the kids or yourself. You know, seven times 30 days, you're over $200. Um, and we just, so it's, it's, we shouldn't be asking why is good food so expensive? We should ask why is bad food so cheap? So number two, reallocate your money. Uh, many people spend $10 a day at their favorite coffee house, which can add up to, like I said, three, $30 a month. So point number two is I already gave you it. Um, 
watch how you use your money. Point number three, when you begin to exercise, expect to hit a wall within the first five or 10 minutes. You may feel like quitting, but don't. Many times your energy level will dramatically improve within a few minutes and you'll finish your workout with energy to spare. There have been times where I went to walk outside and within the first 10 minutes, I'm like, I'm just going to walk back to my truck. You know, sometimes maybe you need to, if your body's getting sick or run down, but you know, as I keep going, I, there's a barrier that, that breaks and you you stay out for a while. It's really, really encouraging. It's con- That's not the runner's wall that, that you hear about. This is something different. This is just getting your body to wake up a little bit. Number four, the busier you stay throughout the day, working, cleaning, running errands. If you're watching this podcast, you can see I get to check my texting real quick. Just make sure there's no emergencies. Um, so the busier you stay throughout the day is key working, like I'm going to go back home now and clean the backyard, uh, run errands. And when you run errands, instead of say, how close can I park? Where, where's the best parking spot? Park far away and walk. Oh, I've got to carry a few groceries. Yeah, that's even better. Um, so we've got to be proactive. And, and I, I thought about this, you know, over the course of a month, a month, let's say, you know, at the mall, I mean, everywhere I go, sometimes even church or, you know, I park farther away, even if it's, even if it's just, um, you know, probably let's say a hundred and let's say 150 calories extra a day. I'm over 3000 to 5000 calories burned by walking just by parking farther for the month. So all these things do add up big time. So the busier you stay throughout the, the day it will really, really help. So solution, move more, sit less, uh, sitting is a new smoking, um, immediately following a meal. Uh, you might want to, and it depends, you know, if you have a couple pizza slices, you're tired, you want to sit down and watch TV. If I have a big salad with a little bit of chicken on it, I usually can't finish it all because it's hard to eat too many vegetables. And then, you know, want to walk around, maybe, um, you name it. You can, you can kind of stay busy. You don't have to sit down and watch TV and, and call it a night at seven o'clock, 6 PM. Um, so number five, four was stay busier. Allow yourself to move more and, and stay active. Number five, incorporate intermittent fasting and long long fasting into your life. I'll talk more about that in the final chapter. Uh, number six, avoid diet drinks. Uh, I would even add to this, avoid juice. Um, I, I, you know, I know I'm going to get controversial here, but um, there's you know the big juicing community and uh, detox by juicing. That's a whole other topic. Um, I'm, so I'm not against it. If you feel led to juice. You know, I think it can be really healthy, especially if it's just green juice, which doesn't taste good. So not too many people do it, but you're getting a lot of fructose in a lot of sugar from the fruit, um, a lot more than you normally would get in and you're not eating the fruit in its natural state. So you're missing, you know, apples, you're missing the pectin, the fiber, the phyto, uh, the, the, uh, some of the, the, the content of the bulk that slows down the absorption rate of the sugar being released into your bloodstream, insulin levels and things like that. So I would avoid diet drinks. Um, personally, I avoid juice. I might have a little bit of grapefruit juice or something because I, I like it, but most of it's pasteurized. It's not real healthy. Um, so I would, I would avoid that. And other products containing artificial sweeteners, of course, the Cokes, the Diet Cokes, the Pepsis, all the, man, if you can really wean off of that, you're going to feel so much better. You're going to sleep better. That These things are so detrimental to our health that I really just, I don't think we, we know the ramifications just yet. Then number seven, if you're going to exercise uh, mid-afternoon or evening, uh, some experts suggest it's often best to perform resistance training before cardiopulmonary training, you know, 30 minutes of weight, 30 minutes of, of jogging. I'm not going to get that technical in this book because I'm not an expert in this area. Um, I would say, here's what I would say, exercise when it's best for you. I can't do it later in the afternoon. I'm not an evening exerciser. I get up, I study, prepare my sermons, uh, pray, listen to worship. A couple hours later, you know, I'll go for a walk. I'll do some, just some basic exercises. I don't go to the gym and, um, I do what's best for me. I don't worry about what's okay. 30 minutes of this, you know, I'll get on a bike for a half hour and then I'll do my, my workout or I'll go walk in the desert or I'll go on a bike ride. Or maybe one day I'll just mainly do um, hit training. I'll do bike for a couple minutes and then hop off and do these exercises and hop back on the bike, do some hit training, hop on. So you can, I, I just don't get it because there's so many variables on what's your goal. What are you trying to accomplish? Um, you know, cardio is important, but if you're trying to put on muscle, um, weight resistance training is takes the cake as well. But, f- and what type, you know, um, high interval training, you know, more like sprinting or is the, the, 
the uh, oxygen heart rate kept more of a moderate level for a longer time better. I'll let you follow the experts on that, but I would just recommend doing something. You'll never go wrong doing something add resistance training into your program. I would say you can do too much cardio. Uh, and I did that for years um, because I thought, okay, weight loss, cardio. And I could tell it really, you know, my muscles uh, just didn't perform as well. Um, if your plan is to exercise, I'll do number eight right now. If your plan is to exercise first thing in the morning, some suggest consuming a small amount of protein beforehand, such as a protein shake. Uh, they say this helps to minimize muscle tissue from being broken down. I know that some people recommend uh actually working out in a fasted state with growth hormone levels elevated and different things like that. Um, so I would just get it in when you can. And if you need to eat a little bit, like sometimes I will need to eat a little bit. For example, if I have, you know, if I'm up at 4.30 in the morning and I can't just drink green tea or I'll, I'll feel sick, I don't know why necessarily. I know it has to do with the, the phytochemicals and things. Um, but I'll have a little bit of maybe 100, 200 calories and then, then I don't get sick and I can enjoy my green tea. And then a couple hours later, um, I'll work out and then definitely try to eat afterwards. So, you know, I try not to get too technical because we've got lives to lead, lead and families to lead and, um, just do what you know to be right in moderation. Number nine, if within an hour or two after eating, you feel hungry again, persevere through it. The supposed hunger eventually leaves. A lot of it has to do with our blood sugar dropping. Um, and we really aren't hungry. We're craving. Our body's craving certain things. So what I do, because I feel it, so I might, I, I, might, I, I might actually eat maybe three or four blueberries or raspberries just to kind of give me something, then drink some water. And okay, you know, deal with it. A couple, five, ten minutes later, you're not hungry anymore. So what's happening is we get hungry a couple hours later, we respond, we get a big snack. We get a couple hungry a couple hours later, we respond, get a big snack. And we're just constantly eating and that, that has to stop. Uh, number 10, plan your daily meals whenever possible. That's what I talked about earlier, pre-pan, pre-panned. Pre-planned means prepared. And so I've got my food kind of laid out for today and tomorrow. Um, and even if I don't, I've got the right foods in the refrigerator uh, that I can choose um, I won't get into all the, you know, different things you can do. Um, that's up to you. Number 11, if you fail to eat properly for a day or two in a row, uh, maybe some of you are listening, that's happened, or a week, you get back on track. Start the following day. Number 11 is so important. Get back on track. Uh, I know, you know, I've just, even this week, I've tried to, you know, let me just kind of uh, watch it. I'm recording the book. I want to, I want to live what I'm talking about. And one day I had like 3,600 calories because I started earlier in the morning, um, it, just, it was all healthy. It was good, but my body must have needed it. And I'm glad I didn't get up the next day and go, oh, forget it. Let's just keep moving. And I actually, you know, I think I weighed myself. I was probably up two pounds. A lot of that has to do with sodium and things like that. But I don't weigh myself every day. I sometimes go weeks without doing it. Um, moderation's the key. So um, get back on track. That's number 11. Get back on track, fall forward, and repeat the process again. Number 12, read health, read reputable health and fitness books or listen to podcasts um, enough just to keep you educated and motivated. I mean, I can name a lot, but um, not all of them are, you know, they're not Christians. So, you know, and, and a lot of the, even some of my friends in the fitness arena, man, they're, they're just, they're hardcore obsessed. Uh, hey, look at my, you know, I got a, I got a um, uh, cold water therapy plunge. Um, what do they call those? You know, a little, little pool. Uh, I've got some red light therapy sauna. I've got the breathing. I take off my shoes and I do earthing and I walk, walk on the grass and I walk on the dirt. And then I've got this, this, um, this supplement here. And I've got this, this, this gauge to put on my head to, you know, really, uh, offset this. And then I've got, it's like, man, I think walking in the dirt's good. Walking in the grass is great. I'll jump in a cold pool or shower. You know, there's a lot of benefits, but you know, we got to stay balanced. So that's why when I recommend people, sometimes they'll say things or they'll cuss, you know, um, and it's just, you know, people, wow, you recommend this person and they, they believe in evolution. Yeah, I know, I know, but you take the, take the wheat and throw out the chaff. Um, and so, but if I found, if I've watched, you know, um, like on fasting, Alan Goldhammer, uh, with uh, True North Center, I uh, actually visited there. About six months ago, stayed for five days. It was uh, very beneficial, very eye opening. I uh, was able to eat some of their healthy food, and it's healthy, but it did not taste like what we're used to. No salt, no oil, no sugar. Uh, but I, I got used to it, and I liked it. Um, and then uh, just, I just want to go up there and get away. And it was actually more of a retreat, but I found out you can't do a retreat up there because they're constantly checking in on you like four times a day 
bring in water and change. So it was, it was not what I thought, but it was definitely beneficial. Um, so he says some things I don't agree with, but a lot of great information for those who want to do long-term fasting. Dr. Jason Fung, of course, um, Daniel Pompa is a lot of great resources. Um, of course, Dr. Huberman, uh, real popular right now, Ben Greenfield, Dr. Um, Peter Atia, uh, Dr. Ben Bickman, um, you know, Gary Brecka. We, you know, there's a lot of good podcasts. Gabriel Lyons, Dr. Gabriel Lyons, Dr. Uh, yeah, she's a doctor. Uh, Thomas D. Lauer, very knowledgeable guy. I like how he's finding some balance, especially now. Uh, Paul, Dr. Paul Saladino, you know, so I follow a lot of these, these people, even my own, uh, friend, uh, Dr. Paul, uh, Brillhart, who wrote a book on fasting, has helped me out tremendously as well. Um, and so it's good, you know, because if you're looking at that versus, you know, donut commercials and, and, um, and, and things that, that keep you kind of going in the wrong direction or negative, it's really hard to stay positive when you're feeding on the negative. So follow and listen to, but if you, you, you've got to be getting the word of God in, uh, that, that must be the priority. So if you're not getting enough word in and you're watching all these podcasts, now here's the, here's the downside to that. Too much information, information overload can be detrimental because all the guys I just mentioned, they have different views on what diet is best. Whole plant based. I mean, I didn't get into Esselstyn and Caldwell and, you know, the whole forks over knives guys. And, you know, and, well, they're saying this, they're saying this, they're saying this, they're saying this. And it can get real confusing, overwhelming. I don't know what to do. And that's not good either. So you want to be careful when you follow these different people. As long as you have the, the, the grounding is in the word of God, um, in moderation, God given food. And, you know, you learn from what you learn from them. I've got, I've got some concerns with whole plant based food only. I uh, never, you know, I know friends who follow that. They say they kind of call it vegan, but they're, but then they go buy, um, chips and crackers that have a lot of, um, of seed oils in them, refined vegetable oils. I'm like, ah, I'd rather have an egg. So, you know, that, that's the downside to following a lot of different people. Uh, so you just, as long as you have a biblical model, that's how you sift everything through that biblical model and you don't get too carried away. When possible, walk, jog, or hike outside. Again, I talked about parking farther away from different things. Uh, number 14, when exercising, um, choose, again, wa I watch like some videos or some listen to some uh, uplifting music. Um, I'll do, you know, I'll talk to people on the phone while exercising. So you have to make it, you have to make it a priority. Uh, number 15, don't allow yourself to fall into the winter weight gain trap. This starts in October. My goal is October, November, December. I just like to maintain. I also like when I go on vacation, uh, we, we take a few weeks, we go on vacation with the family. I actually, I'm excited about maintaining or even losing. I've, I've came back from vacation four pounds lighter because we're so busy. We're so active and, and just being active, eating healthy. See, for me, it's not like, oh, now I can pig out and I can eat tons of ice cream. I can have this. I can have this because I don't feel well. I don't sleep well. I don't have a good attitude. So for me, I don't, I don't know what the big deal is and why people make fun of it because you're, you're actually taking better care of your body. Um, so don't allow yourself to fall into that winter, winter weight gain trap. That's number 15. Number 16, avoid buying food that you'll be tempted to eat. This is why I've got pretty good discipline, but I'm not going to put, I actually don't have chocolate in my house. Uh, cause I just, I just love even organic, even chocolate that's not sweet. Cause I'll throw some honey on it and some peanut butter. It's just a very tempting thing for me. And it's much easier. You know, I can, I can get a Ezekiel bread and put some, uh, Manuka honey on it with some MCT oils. You know, I'm not going to go crave that at night. I'm not going to, you know, it's no big deal. But if I've got chocolate, chocolate in the house, or of course, all the other good stuff, uh, it makes it very difficult. I'm trying to think of what else, what else I don't want. That's usually that one. And, um, yeah, I can't really think what, I mean, yeah, if I know there's ice cream, you know, depend on chocolate chip ice cream in the fridge, in the freezer, that will, that's kind of tough too. Uh, so you have to just avoid those things. Like those who are wanting to stop alcohol, um, I would eliminate it from your home completely. Uh, because by the time you have to think about it, go take a drive, get dressed or whatever, it really, really slows down the process. Out of sight, out of mind is in, really helpful in this, in this area. So 16, you know, avoid buying things you don't want to eat or drink. Number 17, you have to schedule in exercise with other appointment, uh, other important daily activities. You have to put first things first. That's why get up in the morning, time with the Lord, exercise, and then uh, go forward from there. And then 18, although many diet books and magazines contain helpful information about weight loss, they are not the answer in them 
selves. Always remember that. They might help you, but it's biblical advice. It really helps persistence, correct information, moving forward despite setbacks, discipline. Uh, these are your most valuable tools. So don't rely on number 18. Don't rely on, you know, diet books to be the answer. Um, or this, basically this new fad, this new diet fad is probably what I'm trying to say. And then number 19, use wisdom. Do not believe claims such as it only takes a few minutes a day, or you can consume whatever you want. Just take this pill, uh, or lose all the weight you want while you sleep. Just wear this belt. I mean, all the, this is ridiculous. Let's use common sense. These claims develop a false perception about weight loss for consumers. And then number 20 is not in the book, but I'm going to give you that bonus right now. Repeat these. Everything I just said, repeat these. So you can even download the book at our church website, westsidechristianfellowship.org for free. Print this out and you repeat these. And and once you repeat them, they actually become a habit. So I actually don't have to look at these again. These have, these have become ingrained and they are habit. They're habit forming. So these are habits in my life. So anyway, we're going to get into a very important topic next. That is on food, 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 food. But I hope this section in this chapter on preparation, uh, has really helped.